In the last video, I showed that we can manipulate the four motors of a quadcopter to maneuver it in 3D space by getting it to roll, pitch, yaw, and change its thrust. We also covered the four sensors that we have at our disposal to estimate the system states. Now in this video, we're going to use that knowledge to design a control system architecture for hovering a quadcopter. That means we're gonna figure out which states we need to feed back, how many controllers we need to build, and how those controllers interact with each other. I'm Brian, and welcome to a MATLAB Tech Talk. In the control system we're developing, the plant is the mini drone itself. It takes four motor speeds as inputs, which then spin the propellers, generating forces and torques that affect the output state. The output that we want is to have the mini drone hover at a fixed altitude. So the question becomes, how do we command these four motors autonomously so that that happens? Well, to start, let's assume that rather than do it autonomously, we want to command the mini drone manually. That is, we have a remote control with toggles that directly control all four motor speeds. The left toggle would control the two front motors, and the right toggle would control the two rear motors. This puts you in the feedback path, because you can see where the drone is, and then react to its position and attitude by moving the four toggles in very specific ways. If you want to increase thrust, you'd speed up all four motors by moving the two toggles in this direction. Yaw requires that two opposing motors increase their speed and the other two decrease speed, so that yawing left, for example, would require this kind of toggle motion. Then to roll the vehicle, you would need to increase one of the left-right pairs and decrease the other, and to pitch the vehicle, you would increase one of the front-back pairs and decrease the other. In this way, you, as the feedback controller, could get the drone to hover by expertly changing the commands to these four motors. Now, while this is possible, thinking in terms of motor speed seems really hard, and we want to make our job easier. So instead, we can use the motor mixing algorithm that we created in the last video and command thrust, roll, pitch, and yaw directly. When we command thrust, for example, this single thrust command gets split evenly to all four motors. The yaw command is distributed positive to two motors and negative to the other two, and so on. Now our remote control toggles are aligned with the intuitive roll, pitch, yaw, and thrust rather than the mind-bending motor speeds. This is the controller configuration that a lot of operators use when manually flying their quadcopters. But it turns out thinking in terms of roll, pitch, yaw, and thrust is also beneficial when we're developing an autonomous control system. So we'll keep the motor mixing algorithm and build a feedback control system with it in the loop as well. All right, let's get rid of the human operator and think about how we can accomplish the same thing autonomously. We'll start by focusing on the thrust command. Thrust is always in the same direction relative to the drone airframe. It's along the z-axis of the mini drone. That means that if the drone is flying level and the z-axis is aligned with the gravity vector, then increasing thrust causes the drone to increase its altitude rate, which is how fast it's rising, and decreasing thrust drops the altitude rate. And that's pretty straightforward. However, if our drone is flying at a steep pitch or roll angle, then increasing thrust is coupled to both altitude rate and horizontal speed. Therefore, if we're building a controller for a racing drone that's likely to fly at extreme roll and pitch angles, then we need to take this coupling into account. However, for our simple hover controller, I'm just going to assume that the roll and pitch angles are always really small. In this way, changing the thrust only meaningfully impacts altitude rate and nothing else. So with this information, we can start our control design. To begin, let's build a controller that uses thrust to adjust the altitude. If we're able to measure the drone altitude, then we can feed it back to compare it to an altitude reference. The resulting error is then fed into an altitude controller that's using that information to determine how to increase or decrease thrust. For now, we can think of this controller as some form of a PID controller, and we're going to talk about how to tune it in future videos in this series. So with this controller, if the drone is hovering too low, the altitude error will be positive, and the thrust command will increase, causing all four motors to speed up at the same time, and the drone will rise. If the drone is too high, then all four motors will slow down so that the drone will descend. So that's it, right? Our job is done. We've developed a simple altitude controller which will hover our mini drone, and it's perfect. 
except that you know that that's not the case, because there are disturbances like wind gusts that will induce a little roll or pitch into the system, and when that happens, the thrust will not only adjust altitude, but also create some horizontal motion, and the drone will start to move away from you. And what good is a hover controller that maintains altitude, but requires you to chase after it, or it'll crash into walls? That's hardly hovering. Nope, we clearly need a better control system architecture, and we should start by trying to maintain level flight by controlling roll and pitch angles to zero degrees. If we can keep the mini drone level, then thrust once again will only impact altitude and the drone won't wander away. Now, we know from the last video that we're able to command thrust, roll, pitch, and yaw independently. That is, we can command one action without affecting the others. Knowing this, we can create three more feedback controllers, one for roll, pitch, and yaw, exactly the same way that we did for thrust. Now, to give us a little more room, I'm going to redraw the block diagram and we'll condense the motor mixing algorithm block to just say MMA. Now, the output of the plant is more than just altitude. We're also going to need to measure or estimate the roll, pitch, and yaw angles as well. And I'm going to feed all of the system states back and then label which state I'm using for each controller. So hopefully this all makes sense to you. I'm feeding the estimated roll angle into the roll controller and the estimated yaw angle into the yaw controller and so on. All right, so now what do we have? Well, we have four independent or decoupled controllers. One for thrust, which is really an altitude controller since we're claiming small roll and pitch angles and then three controllers that are trying to maintain zero degrees in roll, pitch, and yaw respectively. This should maintain altitude, and it should keep the mini drone facing forward and level with the ground. Now this is obviously a better hover controller than our first one, but again, it's still not perfect. To understand why, let's play our hypothetical wind gust through this system. Now the wind might initially introduce a little roll angle, but our roll controller will remove that error and get the drone back to level flight. However, for a very brief time during the roll, the thrust vector is not straight up and down, and therefore the drone will have moved horizontally a little bit. Then another gust comes and causes another roll, or pitch error, and the drone walks away a little bit more. So even though the drone won't run away continuously like our first controller, this controller will still allow it to meander away slowly. There's nothing in our control system architecture that will bring the drone back to its starting position. Let's improve this control system to do just that. I'm going to once again clean up our block diagram to make some room for additional control logic. Okay, now that we have a little room, let's think about what roll and pitch are doing while hovering. It's tempting to say that both angles should be zero, and that's how we set up this current version of the controller. However, they may need to be non-zero in order to hover. For example, if we want to hover in a strong constant wind, then the drone will have to lean into the wind at some angle to maintain its ground position. So rather than specifying that we want level flight, really what we need is a ground position controller, something that will recognize when the drone is wandering off and make the necessary corrections to bring it back to the reference point X and Y. But just because we don't want to pick specific roll and pitch angles, that doesn't mean that we don't need the roll and pitch controllers. Remember from the first video that a quadcopter is incapable of moving left, right, forward, or backward without first rolling or pitching into the desired direction of travel. So our control system needs to couple position errors with roll and pitch. And this is a complicated sounding set of maneuvers, but luckily the resulting controller is pretty simple to understand. We can feed back the mini drone's measured XY position and compare it to the reference to get the position error. For now, we'll say that the reference position is 0, 0. This way, our controller will cause the drone to hover right above the takeoff point. Now, our position controller takes the position error as an input and then outputs roll and pitch angles. These are the reference angles that our roll and pitch controllers are trying to follow. So instead of us, as the designer, picking roll and pitch angles, we're letting the position controller create them for us. In this way, the position controller is the outer loop, and it's generating the reference commands for the inner loop roll and pitch controllers. These are cascaded loops. Now, as a quick side note, the measured yaw angle also feeds into the position controller. 
The reason, very briefly, is that the xy position error is relative to the ground, or the world reference frame. Whereas roll and pitch are relative to the body of the drone, therefore pitch doesn't always move the drone in the x world direction, and roll doesn't always move the drone in the y world direction. It depends on how the drone is rotated, or its yaw angle. So if we need to move the drone to a very specific spot in the room, then it needs to know yaw in order to determine whether roll, pitch, or some combination of the two is needed to achieve that. So our position controller uses yaw to convert between the world xy frame and the body xy frame. Alright, let's walk through a thought exercise to see how all of these controllers work together to maintain position and altitude. Let's say that the mini drone is flying level at the correct altitude, but a little too far left of where it took off. This will result in a position error that feeds into the position controller. The proportional part of the controller will multiply that error by a constant, which will request that the drone roll to the right. The roll controller will see that there's a roll error because the drone is still level and request a rolling torque. This will play through the motor mixing algorithm and request that the motors on the left side of the drone speed up and the motors on the right side slow down. This will roll the drone to the commanded angle. Now the drone will begin to move to the right, but since the vertical component of thrust is slightly smaller when rolled, the drone will also start to lose altitude. The altitude controller will sense this error and increase the thrust command accordingly. Now as the drone continues moving right, the position error is dropping and therefore the requested roll angle through the proportional path is also dropping, bringing the drone back level. This is now a good architecture for our hover control system, but there are two glaring obstacles to creating and tuning it. First, this requires us having a way to estimate the state's yaw, roll, pitch, altitude, and xy position. These are the signals that we're feeding back into our controllers. And second, we need to tune six PID controllers that all interact with each other, and specifically four of them directly coupled in cascaded loops. The way we're going to handle the first problem is by combining the measurements from the four sensors we have, and in some cases using a model and a Kalman filter to estimate each of those feedback states. For the second problem, we need a good model of our system so that we can use model-based design and MATLAB and Simulink to tune our six PID controllers. In fact, if we just look at the controller portion of this feedback system, you can see that the Simulink model has pretty much the exact same controller architecture that we've built in this video. The outer loop XY position controller is generating the reference pitch and roll angles for the inner loop controller. There's also the yaw and altitude controllers, and each of them feed into the motor mixing algorithm. In the next video, we're going to leave the world of concepts and drawings and move over to Simulink to build the actual software for this control system and model the plant and environment dynamics. So if you don't want to miss the next Tech Talk video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want to check out my channel, Control System Lectures, I cover more control theory topics there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.